Time magazine has called it the Khodorkovsky documentary Nobody in Russia Wants to Screen. The new film about the Russian oil tycoon Mikhail Khodorkovsky is due to be released in Russia later this week. But only a small number of cinemas will actually screen the movie amid concerns over its controversial content. The Khodorkovsky saga saw Russia's once richest man go up against the then president Vladimir Putin and lose. The former head of the Russian oil firm Yukos is expected to remain behind bars until at least 2016 on various fraud charges. Mr. Putin accused him of the worst excesses of the oligarch era when private businessmen got their hands on state assets. But rights groups say his successive prosecutions were politically motivated, and Khodorkovsky has become a symbol for the curtailment of the rule of law. Whether the documentary is screened raises important questions about media freedom and censorship in modern-day Russia. Voice of Russia spoke with the director of the documentary, the German filmmaker Cyril Tushi. He says that the problem is not the officials in Moscow, but the theater owners themselves. I think the all this fuss about uh, pulling back of the cinema theaters uh, has, I think so. I don't know. Doesn't have that much to do with pressure from from above, but with their own self censorship. That they think, okay, if they don't take it, they have better uh, economical chances to survive, and maybe they have. They are frightened that. They, they will get punished by some state agency, but uh, the state agency people I got information from, they said no. They think the film is objective, and they will not interfere. But they will not make even promotion for the film because of the person in the film. The filmmaker said he was not too bothered about the Russian release of a film that has been a hit in other countries. It was unveiled during the Berlin Film Festival and had relative success at independent cinemas in Europe and the United States. Mr. Tushi said he would make sure that Russians are, at the very least, able to watch his movie online. It has uh, it's, it's, it's shown in many countries and it's really crowded all the time, but the interest is higher in Russia. So even even that there are only just a few theaters, they will be crowded, and that's also very good. And if If there are not enough theaters, we will just show it in universities or in clubs or in private rooms. So, if there's interest, then the people will find it. And if everything is failing, we'll just put a good, very good quality um, HD quality online on our, on our own to get rid of all those bad quality torrent copies. <laughs> The movie was filmed in Moscow, Saint Petersburg, and other locations connected with the Yukos affair, from Israel to the United States. It was completed this year, but filming started way back in 2005, when Khodorkovsky was found guilty of six of the seven charges filed against him. It narrates Khodorkovsky's rise to influence and power, and his attempt in 2003 to control Russia's largest company. All the while, he was shoring up the political opposition to President Putin, who sought to curb the power of the oligarchs. Although the film is politically sensitive, particularly ahead of Russia's elections, the filmmaker Tushi says he was not seeking headlines. His interest in Khodorkovsky's story was personal, not political. He says. Of course, I didn't have a a message I wanted to find. And I, I, I was not a justice seeker. That, that is, I, no, no, definitely not. I was just, I was interested in the person as a character and as a contradictory person, because I, I think these are the most interesting one, and I see this within myself uh, too. So, but all these kind of like educational or moral things, I didn't start with. Definitely not. The 113-minute documentary, titled simply Khodorkovsky, will only show in 17 venues across Russia, despite an initial hope that it would screen to about 40. Lilia Klasan, a spokeswoman for the Pioneer Cinema in Moscow, says the film was not being rejected on political grounds. She says that there was no state pressure, and cinema executives had decided not to show the film because the distributor was disorganized. 
Other cinemas said a serious political documentary was not what cinema goers want to see this close to Christmas. The distributors, however, disagree. Alexei Artemonov, who markets the film for the distributors' Kino Club, said many cinemas were ready to screen the movie, but they pulled out after Moscow's state-run theaters dropped the title from their schedule. The owners of the theaters they they started this self-censorship. Uh, not to make uh, angry our authorities, especially uh, before uh, the elections that will be held at, at, on the 4th of December. The documentary will start showing in Russia this week, although, according to the director at least, many Russians will only be watching it online.